The number eight Grand Valley State football team ventured to Davenport University for the shortest road trip in program history, but the trip also proved to be one of the craziest days in Laker football history. GVSU pulled out a 19-14 comeback victory in the closing minutes of the game that featured two lightning delays, monsoon-type rain, and pretty much every type of weather Michigan could throw at it. Here to talk about the game is head coach Matt Mitchell. And Mitch, despite all of that, you guys were able to pull out a win. Yeah, we didn't play very good football, but I, I will give our kids a lot of credit. Uh, we, were, we were in a bad spot there late in the fourth quarter, but we didn't really flinch. You know, our, our sidelines stuck really tight and uh, had to go with Cole Katopka, our backup quarterback, and just kind of... We converted the fourth down play, just kind of kept playing. And then after, even after we got that stop, our defense went out there. We let the quarterback scramble on a fourth and 15 for a first down, but um, found a way to kind of win the game. It was a very, um, very interesting day all around. We didn't play real well. You had weather delays, a lot of things. Credit Davenport too, a six and one Davenport team that was playing really inspired football. Uh, you know, I thought they came in and, and really gave us everything we could handle, but we found a way to win, and sometimes that's what you got to do. Second time this year you had a lightning delay pre-game. So how much did the Delta game and going through that already help you this week? I think it helped us a little bit. You know, I, I don't know that we were anticipating that heading over there, and so I think we did a really good job at Delta that we knew that there was going to be a lightning delay probably because we're looking at the weather forecast. So we had a little bit extra in terms of nutrition ready to go. I don't know that we were as prepared in terms of our nutritional needs for the two delays that we had. Uh, but, you know, I, I think the guys did a good job staying in the locker room, trying to keep them focused, trying to keep them, you know, ready to go. And uh, I think that showed in the opening drive. You know, we went all the way down the field. Obviously, the fumble on the two-yard line is uh, not something you can have happen. But um, that was a great drive to start the game. I thought our offense showed that they were ready to go to start it. Yeah, Bart Williams went four for five on that drive. It had the weather at the beginning of it where the ball slips all the way to the three. You go 97 yards, fumble on the other end. How much did weather play a factor in those two plays bookending that otherwise great drive? Yeah, I, we, I mean, we really struggled to return the football. We didn't catch, a, we didn't catch, a, we caught one kickoff and we, we didn't catch any punts. And so we've got to do a better job of pregame warm up, obviously, of trying to judge the ball when the ball's in the air and doing a better job because that was something we kind of struggled with. We had opportunities in punt return to probably get some better field position for offense. We didn't field the football. So, um, that's one thing we probably didn't really handle real well was fielding the football um, on that end. The other end of it, special teams, I got to give a lot of credit to JJ McGrath. Uh, two field goals, one was definitely in the wind. A lot of wind hit the two field goals, and his kickoffs were uh, really good. No return yardage at all for them on, on those. So one guy that showed up and, and had a really solid game was JJ. We just too many uh, lapses in play offensively and defensively. The guy that's been his holder that's been great is Cole Katopka. Now he got to thrust into the starting role and the quarterback late in the game, driving rain. He's been standing around in the cold conditions. How proud of you were Cole for coming in like that? Uh, really proud of him. You know, um, obviously Bart has been, um, you know, struggling a bit with an injury here the past few weeks and he got hit uh, right before half and tried to give it a go and then just got to the point where he couldn't do it. Um, and so we, we inserted Cole into the game. Uh, ran a quarterback run to kind of get his juices flowing, which I think that was important at that point in time. And he scrambled. He got hit pretty good, but bounced back. And then that last drive, like, uh, great job bouncing back because a couple of those throws he had in that drive were not good. Um, was a little off the mark on a few of those throws, having those windy conditions, but just kind of kept battling. And can't say enough about our receivers that have made plays all year. Nick Dots and Austin Parity, Brandon Wadley continued to kind of help him make some plays and uh, get the ball and then you know Nick made a great job after the catch after the catch advancing and getting us the touchdown. Knowing how much of a team game football is, I think you touched on this right after the game, how much your defense was picking up your offense and vice versa. How key was that down the stretch with those tough moments? Yeah, it was really key. You know, I think our defense was pretty disappointed because they were pitching a shutout um, in the start of the fourth quarter. You got two score lead, you got to close that game out defensively. But that being said, once we lost the lead, I thought we managed the, uh, the game really well in terms of calling our timeouts, getting a stop, getting the ball back to our offense. And then we scored. There was still some time left on the clock. You would have liked to got the one fourth down stop, but we did a good job on the Hail Mary. We were prepared for the Hail Mary situation, put in some of our wideouts to protect the end zone. And uh, fittingly so, the guy, I think the guy that batted it down was Nick Dotson, the same guy, game-winning touchdown. He also has the PBU to kind of seal the game. Kind of tell us about the sideline reaction after Dodson comes down and scores. Obviously, you see that great celebration in the end zone. What was it like over there? Uh, it was pretty crazy. Um, we were we were jacked up a little bit because we were trying to go for two. Um, <laughs> that we were with a five point lead. The chart says you know it was obvious to go for two. We're trying to signal our players to go for two. There's so much excitement with our players that have just scored there in the end zone. So we end up having to take a delay a game because we're out of timeouts uh, because of the or disorganization. But as a coach, I don't know that I can really fault our players for that. You'd like to be a little bit better getting the two-point playoff. But um, those guys were 
were generally excited. I was excited for them. Uh, we had not played well. We had not played good football, but we had kind of found a way to, to make a play. And uh, I think uh, everybody on the sideline was really excited when Nick kind of made that play. I think it's really fitting Nick Dotson was the guy that was the, the person to make that play too. And then finally, you know, Majewski magic has kind of become a thing for Davenport now. They've had all those close games. We talked about it all year, all week long, how Davenport all year has found a way to win those tight games. For you guys to be the ones to come up with that answer, seems pretty big. Well, yeah, it does. I mean, I think Davenport, like I said, it had made a lot of fourth quarter comebacks. Um, you know, I think the series I'm really disappointed in is, um, you know, we score, uh, get the stop, the offense gets the ball back on the 50, we go down, we got the ball inside the 10 yard line, up 10 nothing. If you punch that one in and it's 17 nothing, I think a three score lead is going to be really, really difficult. We didn't do it. We had to settle for the field goal. And I think that gave Davenport a lot of, lot of energy, a lot of life. And there's definitely a no quit uh, mentality at Davenport. You can feel that other players. Um, you can say what you want. That defense is a good defense. The, they've got guys up front, the uh, South Florida transfer, Western Michigan transfer. That front is a really, really good defensive front. And uh, we knew there was going to be some challenges going in. And so uh, I give a lot of credit to Amport for their fight. I thought it was a really, there was great sportsmanship in the game. I think both sides, um, they were disappointed after the game, but there was great sportsmanship, a lot of respect between the two programs, and a lot of that has to do with their head coach. So I appreciate, um, you know, the, the opportunity to compete against them. And they're, they're you know, they're, they're a really good team in our league. They were, they were not 6-1 and one by accident. Congratulations on the win, Coach. All right, thank you. When we come back, we'll preview the Battle of the Valleys right here on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. The Laker football team will head to Saginaw for the Battle of the Valleys this Saturday against SVSU. Head coach Matt Mitchell back to talk about the game coming up and coach another really good football team on the horizon. Here. Yeah, great team. I mean, if you're looking at Saginaw Valley State, this is a playoff game for them. Um, if they win, they keep their chances alive with two losses in our region. A loss uh, that probably eliminates them. So you got to think a senior class, a coaching staff has got to put everything on the line for this. Um, you know, they're 6-2. and two. The, the two games they lost were at Ashland 21-17, a game they were leading um, into the fourth quarter. And then they lost to Ferris 28-14, a game they were leading at halftime. So um, it's a really good football team. I'm really impressed by their offense, um, quarterback, and, and the receivers, and the guys they got. They can really throw the ball around. Uh, they're very competent in that end. And they play really solid defense. I mean, statistically, they're one of the better defenses in our league. So this is a balanced football team. We've got to go there. Um, this is going to be a you know it's going to be a really hard fought game. This is this is for us too a little bit of starting the playoffs for us. Um, we can't afford any to take any more losses. They're the same way, so we expect a really really physical competitive game when we head to Saginaw. Finally, a road trip where your guys have been there before, so they know what to expect. But nonetheless, Saginaw is a really tough place to go and get a win. It is a tough place, and um, it's it's been an intense rivalry. Um, we have a lot of rivalries in the state, but that's definitely one that's been intense. And I've been around it for 15 years, back to the mid 2000s. A lot of things that have gone on back and forth those programs. So uh, we're going to have to play really, really well in all three phases. Um, we've got to get some guys back. Hopefully, off of we we're pretty banged up with injuries. We've got to continue to get the those guys back. But I think everybody at this time of the year is kind of feeling the GLIAC football, you know, in terms of the the ups and downs but uh, really really critical we gotta get this turnover thing figured out we've had two straight weeks where we've been on the negative side of the turnovers and that's put us in jeopardy of you know potentially going 0 and 2 in those two weeks and so that's something that's got to be addressed this week we got to get cleaned up if you could the first five weeks you guys were so good about the turnover margin what's changed the last couple of weeks well you know I think yesterday well, excuse me on we played um, Davenport on, on Saturday that's the first time we fumbled the ball you know our running backs didn't play as good as they can um, and some of that had to do with the contact that Davenport was bringing. I think that was a physical defense that was really popping pads, and there's a lot going on out there. But, you know, I, I don't blame it necessarily. The, the, the lack of completions has to do a little bit more with the wind and the weather conditions. I don't really blame the weather on our, our, our ball security. We just weren't as focused as we needed to be on ball security. So that's something we have got to get cleaned up. One week it was the, the picks, and then last week it's the fumbles. We can't have those things if we expect to win. Sounds like you think Saginaw's an aggressive defense. What can we expect out of them defensively? Well, I mean, their front's really good. Uh, it's really, really difficult. They don't give up a lot of yards rushing. Um, we're going to have to 
Um, we're going to have to find ways to try to get our backs out in space. Um, it was really difficult last week a little bit trying to get that done again. So the focus got to be on the run game or running backs, ball security. We've got to have a, a week of practice where we try to focus on getting those things done and continue to, uh, you know, we're making plays on the outside. That's evident. We've got we to shore up our running game and get a little bit more consistent with our things that are happening with the old line tight ends and the backs and keep hitting things. We were explosive earlier in the year. Um, we've kind of hit a little bit of a mid-season here where we've got to try to refocus up and get better at that. If you could quickly give us some names on the offensive side of the ball to watch out for from the Cardinals. Well, their quarterback, Ryan Conklin, is really good. Um, he, you know, he takes uh, a lot of hits and keeps on going. I mean, he got sacked six times last week against Ferris and kept popping up and kept delivering the football. Um, last year's game, we were able to get some pressure on him, but he kept delivering football. I have a lot of respect for him, how tough he is physically. He obviously can, you know, he's throwing the ball extremely well. And then they have an all-conference receiver, Chad Gilliard, who's big six foot two, 205-pound guy that can go down the field. He can really stretch you. Um, is an explosive threat on the outside. They do a good job moving around, moving the pockets with sprint outs, doing some different things to try to protect their quarterback. But um, if, if their receiver, number 17, has a big day, we're in trouble. So that's something we got definitely got to take a look at because he's one of the better receivers in the league. All right, well, it seems like strong quarterbacks a staple of the GLIAC. Good luck this week, Coach. All right, thank you.